What's going on YouTube? This is ParkerLad88 coming at you with another video. Now that all of our character tutorials are finished, at least for the immediate point in time for Power Rangers, I want to start a new series of videos, and this is going to be called my Getting Good series. As the title implies, what I want to do is go over a series of either concepts or techniques in whatever game that I happen to be playing to help you guys take your game to the next level. Naturally, because Power Rangers is a tag style fighter, the first episode is going to be about team composition. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Now, be it that Power Rangers, as I mentioned before, is a tag style fighter, team composition is a very, very important part of, uh, of this game. Now, for some of you newer guys, I don't know if you've ever come into a tag style fighter. Maybe you've played like, you know, the Marvels back in the day, the Marvel vs. series back in the day. Or maybe you're just walking into into this game. You're like, wow, there there's so many different characters. Like how am I how am I supposed to know like, you know, who to who to use or like, you know, who works well together outside of just, you know, playing with whoever your favorite characters are, right? Which is definitely all well and good. But let's say you kinda want like some team synergy or something like that. I'm hoping that with these topics that I cover today that we can help you with that. And the first and one of the most important things when considering who you want on your team is what assists that those characters have. You gotta know what the assists are. Now, when I made my tutorials, back when I made my first tutorial, I actually meant to include the characters assists in those videos, but after I kind of just made my first video and I kind of just got on a roll of how I wanted to make the videos, I kind of just ended up leaving the assists out. So that is my B, but we're going to go ahead and go with those assists right now. So the first assist that we're going to start with is Jason's assist. So Jason's assist, as you can see, it's basically going to be his sword special, his sword recas. This is actually a, a pretty decent assist because not only is it fast and hit multiple times, which is actually pretty decent for lockdown pressure and whatnot, it also hits off the ground as well. Next up, we have Gia's assist. Gia's assist is also her forward special. Her assist is not my favorite. It does come out pretty quick, and it does have, you know, some lockdown potential, as you guys can see there, because it does hit multiple times. Pick on someone your own side. All right, now let's talk about Tommy's assist. So Tommy's assist, once again, is also his forward special. He does the fully charged version uh, of his dropkick. Um, this is not my, my favorite assist because it does take a little bit of startup, but it does hit multiple times and it's pretty good for combo extension. For Cat's assist, we have her Cat Scratch Claws. She does all three strikes of her Cat Scratch Claws. This, is, this assist is, um, it's not bad. It's a, it's a pretty decent assist because it comes out quick. It's pretty good for lockdown pressure because she does hit three times and she does advance forward. So that actually is pretty helpful. For Magnet Defender, we have Neutral Special, which basically does his gun, his gunshot. It's a serviceable projectile, comes out pretty quick, and leads to a hard knockdown state, so it's pretty decent that way. Another decent assist. Next up, we have Ranger Slayer's assist. Ranger Slayer, she will basically do her back special of her enhanced away arrows. This is really nice because it covers a lot of range. It's, a, it's a, basically a good projectile assist to help characters who need a little help getting in, get in. So she's definitely a, a good assist in that regard. Next up, we have Goldar's Assist. Goldar's Assist is, once again, his forward special. This is pretty quick. I believe it retains its armor, and it does put the opponent in a stagger state if they are on the ground, which is definitely nice. Pretty good for combo extension. Next up, we have Mastodon Sentry. Mastodon Sentry, basically, he has a custom assist where he basically fires projectiles all over the screen. He'll shoot one down, forward, and up. This is great for screen coverage. It comes out quick, and he doesn't stay on board for very long. It's definitely a good, another good assist, just like Kimberly's assist for characters who need help getting in. What do we got here? For Dragon's assist, we yeah. basically have his, uh, I believe it's his back special, where it's basically his, his anti-air special. <clears throat> As implied, <coughs> it's actually good for, it's a more defensive assist for characters who are approaching you uh, from the air. It's good to call out Draken, and you can use that to get some combo conversions. So it's a pretty decent assist in that regard. Not the best, but it's serviceable. For Udana's assist, we have the Ice Ball. I believe it functions just like her regular Ice Ball, where it bounces. There it goes. Yep. Uh, projectile assists are, uh, are usually at least decent because it helps characters who need to approach approach. Plus, if you want to try and get some crazy setup 
when they're frozen off of it. So, like, let's say I want to do, like, uh, movie blues, like, lightning bolt, or let's say I want to, like, build charges while my opponent is frozen and do lightning bolts. It also helps for setups like that. For Trini, Trini has a really good assist. She basically has her, her neutral special, her Nega Beam, I believe it's what it's called. It covers about half the screen, hits multiple times, so it's good for lockdown, and it also hits off the ground. So this assist is is definitely a good assist. For Movie Blue, Movie Blue also has a good assist. It's going to be his forward special. His enhanced forward special, when he has one charge built up, he shoots the slow-moving fireball, which you can follow behind, and it also hits multiple times, so it's good for lockdown pressure in that regard as well. For Time Force Pink, we have the hidden missiles. This is definitely a really good assist because it hits off the ground. It causes great lockdown pressure because it homes in on to wherever the opponent is and just keeps them locked down because of just how, I guess, syncopated, so to speak. They they actually hit the opponent. They, it's not just all at once. It kind of just rains down, and so it's really good for lockdown pressure. The only bad thing about it is the fact that she kind of takes a little while for her startup, so you have to put her in a position where you can either keep her off the screen or you have to find a way to protect her while she's doing that. She's a good assist to call off of like a hard knockdown. Well, like, let's say I do something like this, right? This is, would be a good time to call assist, so you can keep on establishing pressure on your opponent so that they can't actually attack her. So, um, Time Force Pink, really good. Zed's assist, he basically has the Captain Corridor, very similar to uh, Draken. It is kind of like an anti-air assist. I truthfully don't know how good this is. I generally tend not to like the more niche assists, but that would require more testing. But either way, that is uh, Zed's assist. Time for Moving over to Zeo Gold. Zeo Gold's assist, he basically has four special, which is his gold rush. This is really good for combo extension, but outside of that, I probably uh, would not throw it out willy-nilly. For Quantum Red, we have his fully charged neutral special. Now, this assist is good, but it's not, like, fantastical. Because it has a slow startup, it is not as good as some of, I think, the more... Um, traditional projectile assist just to help some of the characters that have trouble getting in get in better. It does cause a wall bounce, it does have a big hitbox, but it just has a slow startup. So it's it's a good assist, just not not super -de duper fantastical. Um, one other thing I do actually want to mention about um, Quantum, Quantum Red's assist is that if you actually use his super and you actually tag out with him, his assist actually changes and becomes the Quantum Displace, so which I actually quantum think display. is a, a really good assist because it hits off the ground, hits multiple quantum times, display. it's quick, goes across the entire screen, so it becomes a much, much better assist. For Daishi, Daishi basically does the light option out of his run. Probably what I think is one of the weaker assists in the game. It is, it is quick, but it only covers about half the screen, doesn't really give you a whole lot of knockdown pressure or uh, lockdown pressure, uh, things like that. So it's, it's, I don't think it's all that great. And last but not least, for Shadow Ranger, we have his Shadow Strike. Now initially I didn't think that this was that good, but it actually is pretty decent because it hits off the ground so it's good for combo extension and it tracks to where the opponent is. So it's just one more thing that the opponent has to worry about. And it's also a good way for Daishi, or um, a good way for Shadow Ranger just to come in because he ends up right there, right next to the opponent. And if it hits, it leads to combo follow-ups. And that pretty much covers everybody's assists. Alright guys, now that we've finished talking about assists, let's go ahead and move into the next most important topic in team composition, and that is going to be your character order. So in this game, your team is composed of three characters. Your first character, which is going to be called your point character. You have your second character, which is commonly referred to as the support or battery character. And then you have your third character, which is going to be your anchor character. Let's go ahead and start talking about our point character. So the point character is going to be the character who your primary strategy is going to be focused around, whether that is offensive or whether that is defensive, or whether you have specific setups uh, with that character that are you know, fully utilized with assist. In that same vein, your point character is going to be able to use their fullest potential whenever they have assist behind them. Cat is a really good example of this. Cat in and of herself isn't the best character on her own. She actually needs assist in order for her to do her pressure and left-right mix-up games she likes to do. Because after you do a cartwheel in certain situations, as opposed to going for damage, you can call an assist, flip over to the other side, and 
put your opponent in a cross-up situation where they have to block the other way. Assists also greatly increase uh, Cat's damage potential. So in that vein, that is what uh, point characters are good for. Get off my throne. In the same vein, uh, for Daishi, Daishi definitely has a lot more air mobility with his wall cling, his fakes, and his ability to switch sides. And then he also has the uh, the Sunball here, but once again, this lockdown pressure that he does and these left-right mix-ups that he can do are definitely optimized and his damage with assist. And this is the same with Zeo Gold. Zeo Gold has his gold rushes, which allow him to, you know, move all over the screen and whatnot. He doesn't really need assist in order to help him with his solo damage, but just littering the, the screen with things and then calling assist afterwards in order to get hits in on your opponent, that is what point characters are usually all about. Alright, so now let's move over to the number two slot, your support and or battery characters. These characters are going to be characters that are more so self-sustaining than your point characters, but the main thing that's going to separate them is the fact that they play a support role. They usually have pretty good assists to help your point character do things they need to do. Yudana is a good example of this with her neutral special. Blue having probably one of the best assists in the game. Not only is it the closest thing to a beam assist, but having multiple hits definitely makes it easier for your rushdown characters and for your defensive characters in order to put either more things on the screen or just put your opponent in a situation where they guess wrong. And then Trini, for instance, having a, screen, a beam that goes half screen and is probably one of the most ideal assists for picking up opponents off the ground for characters who don't have those things are definitely really good. The one thing about assist characters is that even though they are more so self-sustaining than your point character, they still need a little bit of help. They're not going to have like the best mix-ups or the best options for getting in. They might not even have the best zoning. Naturally, you'll have some characters that can fulfill multiple slots, of course, but that is pretty much what your support, your support character is for. Alright guys, and for the last character slot we have our anchor characters. So when all the chips are down and you need someone to get the job done, that is what your anchor character is for. They're going to be the most self-sustaining characters on your team. They don't necessarily have to have the best assist or anything like that, but they're just going to be your fallback character with, with your Megazord, I guess, <clears throat> if you haven't already used it at that point. So let's go ahead and talk about some anchor characters here. I personally think that Ranger Slayer is a pretty good anchor character because she can play multiple roles. Not only does she have the arrows for effective zoning, she has multiple mobility options, but she also gets pretty good damage off of her combos as well. She can get anywhere like with all of her meter from like 700. And I think she can actually get 800 in some instances as well. So that's pretty much what makes Ranger Slayer a good anchor character. Shadow Ranger. Shadow Ranger has these uh, similar qualities as well. He has multiple combo paths, fantastic damage uh, off of his meter, off of his um using his meter even a little bit meterless as well. And then he also has some zoning tools as well in, in his stances. He's definitely a more difficult character to use in the anchor slot, but he has the tools to get things done. Mastodon Sentry also has, has these tools. While he doesn't get a lot of damage outside of the corner, what damage he does get inside of the corner is really good. And he gets this for one bar. Like, you can actually do combos with Mastodon Sentry for about close to 700 for one bar. This arguably might make him a better number two slot, just because there are other characters that can use all three bars to get better damage with him. But between his zoning capabilities and the fact that he has a high-low mix-up with his, uh, with his uh, crouching medium and his standing hard, it definitely gives him all the tools in order to get the job done. Alright guys, so the last thing that I want to go over now is just run through every character really quick and just tell you what position I think that that character is is best in. This is going to be completely opinion based, but let's go ahead and get started. First of all, we have Tommy. Tommy is one of those rare characters where because he's an all-rounder, similar to the way Jason is, Tommy can actually play any role on a team. His assist isn't fantastic, but he definitely has great movement options about the screen. He gets good damage for three bars, and his stuff also allows him to set up your um, teammates. I think Tommy is best as either a point character or an anchor character. 
similar to Tommy, Jason is an all-rounder. He is essentially the Ryu of this game. He doesn't excel in any one thing, but he's not bad in any one thing either, and his damage is fantastic. All those things mean that he can really play any spot on a team. The fact that his assist is, offers some nice lockdown pressure, OTGs, gives him makes it good as a 2 or 3 character, his solo damage makes him a great um, character as an anchor character, and then as a point character, he does benefit from assists as well. Next up, we have Gia. I think Gia is a great character as being in the support character slot. Her assist is okay, but there are other characters that get better damage than she does. At the same time, I don't really think that she herself benefits that much from having other assists back her, so I think she's a good support character. As previously mentioned, Ranger Slayer, I think she is a fantastic anchor character. Cat, I think, is relegated to just being a point character. She maximizes her damage and her left-right mix-ups from uh, other assists, so I think you should run her on point. Magnet Defender, I think, is good in the number two slot. I wouldn't put him as an anchor character just because he does have a lot of recovery from some of his moves that would be um, mitigated by him having assists behind him. He gets fantastic damage, so as a result of that, I think running him on point or as a number two is ideal. I think that Lord Dragon could be an excellent point character as he as it is a teleport mix-up character. He has teleports, he's got good mobility options, he has a decent projectile that he can do some setups with, and in that regard I would like to put him as an anchor as well, but I think one of those two slots is great for Lord Dragon. In a similar fashion, I think Goldar is a good anchor character, and I think he is a good point character. He gets fantastic damage whether you use meter or not. The fact that you can do attacks out of his air special means he has fantastic mobility options, and he has great air normals. All of these things backed by assists would make him great on point, but if the chips are down and you just have him in the Megazord, he has the tools in order to, to basically get people dead real quick. Mastodon Sentry, I think he's great in the number 2 slot, and he's also great in the number 3 slot as an anchor character. As previously mentioned, he gets fantastic solo damage, but only in the corner. He has great zoning tools and a high-low mix-up. I think he'd be benefited from assists as well, just to help out his combo game maybe mid-screen. But if you need to get the job done, he can definitely get the job done. Cenozoic Blue Ranger, I think he is a fantastic support character, being in the number 2 slot, one of the best assists in the game, and decent damage. Similarly, Yudana, I think, is a great support character. She has a good assist, and she does well setting up other characters to tag in, and she gets decent damage. Dragon Armor Trini, I believe, has one of the best assists in the game, but you can also use her in order to get the job done if you really, really need it. She gets pretty good damage, about around the 800 range, maybe a little bit more, um, with assists, and also if you dump all the meter into it, so I definitely think the 2 or 3 slot is the place to go, but if I had to pick one, I'd definitely put her in the 2 slot, because there are better anchor characters than her. Trey, he has a good assist for combo extension, but not really much more than that. I definitely think he's better backed with assist. That in combination with his super to help get characters in makes him a good uh, point character. Jen has one of the best assists in the game with her hidden missiles being able to hit um, off the ground and coming in at a syncopated rhythm so that you can kind of stagger and do lockdown pressure with her makes her great. I definitely think that she'd be good on point as well just because of her air mobility and the fact she doesn't get a whole lot of damage even if you dump all the meter into it. So for that, I'd say point or support character. Zed, I think, would be a good option as either a support character or an anchor character. He gets fantastic solo damage, his um, level, his uh, super grab is also really good. He has a lot of tools where he can kind of set up his own uh, mix-ups and whatnot between his putties, his homing projectiles, and his teleport dash, but I definitely think he would also benefit from having assist behind him as well. Now, Shadow Ranger... Shadow Ranger, I think he'd be a good point character. I also think he'd be a good anchor character. I think he gets fantastic solo damage. He has the tools in order to play at multiple ranges. Um, but I definitely think, you know, him having assist. Assist for him would be nice to have, even though he doesn't technically need it. So I would say put him at number one or put him as an anchor. Now we have Quantum Ranger. I think Quantum Ranger is a fantastic anchor character. But I also think he... Actually, I think he's essentially good at every position. As a point character, he does well with assists behind him. As a support character, he does have his formation sword, which helps set up other opponents getting in. He can play multiple play styles between being aggressive and defensive with his gunshots, and he probably gets some of the best damage in this game because you can actually cancel out of his install super by doing EX, so he basically gets about 800 for two bars. And there's not many other characters, if any, that can get that kind of damage. So I definitely think that... Um, Quantum Ranger can play pretty much every role, so he's one of those rare all-rounders. And then, of course, we have Daishi. Now, while Daishi does have 
more mobility options than, let's say, Cat does, I definitely think that he is still... Uh, you can reach his fullest potential by him having a citizen behind him. Anyway, guys, so those are just my opinions on what roles I think these characters should play. I hope you found this overall entertaining and educational, just talking about team composition. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll be back to you later with future videos. This is Parker Lad, and I will see you guys next time.